Hello and welcome back everyone to the Olympia Dynasty. We are here in the Season 8 offseason. Decided not to go with the stream with this one, even though there was a lot of drama. Um, there's just so much back-end work that goes on inside this series. As we look at the uh, conference championship results here, Utah State did not end up winning. So they would not have made the national championship regardless. Um, so I decided just to do it post and let's take a look at all these bowl games here, see who all the teams are. Uh, it's just it's a lot of work for me, and I don't want to do that live It's ex this one was actually a very exciting offseason compared to some of our previous off seasons in this series It just ended up uh, first of all Utah and USC playing in the Rose Bowl I don't know why two Pac-12 teams played in that, but whatever um, Just ended up being one of those things that I thought was better to do off, uh, Recorded Curtis Simpson will end his career with the most sacks in Olympia history Zach Schuster most receiving touchdowns in a career and most receiving touchdowns in a season beating his own record on that one, and uh, also most receiving yards beating out last year's record as well. Zach Schuster had quite the year as he ended up beating his own receptions record as well. Taking a look at some of the results, UCF ended up winning their bowl game. Um, really was just a decent season for the Big 12, Not nothing great. I think the conference as a whole is a little weak at this point. You see California and holy mackerel, Wa Robbie Washburn. Um, had quite the, not even that big of a game, but three touchdowns, 200 yards, as they won 45-3 to in their bowl game. That's insane in the Holiday Bowl. Probably should have gotten a more prestigious bowl game than that. Uh, keep looking here. Uh, it was just not great. TCU, one of the better teams, did not do so well. Tyler Davis ends his career at Indiana with the win over Miami University. Not exactly a high-profile game for him either, but a good career for a very good college quarterback. San Diego State wins their bowl game. Unfortunately, I believe uh, if we go down here, the Big 12 did not pick up many more wins. Utah got blown out in their rematch with USC. Again, I'm not sure why Pac-12 teams were playing in the Rose Bowl. It's interesting, but some drama here is that Hasim Karimi might not be the starting quarterback for USC going forward next year. We'll have to keep an eye on that throughout this offseason to see how they handle it. And then Auburn beating Baylor. Utah State did at least bolt, roll, blow out Vanderbilt. Um, they had a very good season, 12 and 2 on the year. I thought they were one of the most impressive teams in the nation, even though they ended up losing the conference championship game. Zach Brewer had a very good season, and we of course won our bowl game. And then Clemson dominating Ohio State in the championship game. They were the best team in the FBS this year. Looking at the polls. It was a pretty good year for us. Utah State finishes 6th, um, Olympia finishes 14th in the AP polls. Really felt like we could have been better, but it is what it is. David Strong, he wins the Heisman, so a running back winning the Heisman, he will be imported into our Madden franchise. Of course, we'll have to figure out how good he is. He is a senior, so I think that tends to mean there's a little less mileage on him as far as where he goes, but looking at the all NCAA first team, Olympia actually had quite a few players make this. Dick Parrish makes it as a defensive tackle. What a season he had. Curtis Simpson, no surprise there. Lee Williams at Mike Linebacker. James McIntosh, of course, to the surprise of no one, the number one quarterback. And then Derek Canary, also no surprise here that he finishes first team as a returner. Joe Gray from Utah State finishes second team, All-American. Zach Schuster finishes as wide receiver in the second team. I think he could have been first team if he had more competent quarterback play. Jay Moore finishes second team as a free safety, and that is it for that. Going to the freshmen here as we keep scrolling down. Unfortunately, Olympia really didn't have a ton of true freshmen uh, play for them this year, so they did not have anybody there. Big 12 would have Zach Schuster, Daryl Silva, Davide Flacke, uh, Bob Haleth. Going down the list here as well. Just a lot of Utah players, Dick Parrish, Vincent Hargrove, Curtis Simpson, Lee Williams, again, Utah State, James McIntosh, Utah State, Jay Moore, Sam Franklin, uh, UCF players, and then Derek Canary. On the second team, Utah State, Ty Kreese makes it as a wide receiver, we have some UCF players, and then BYU, Utah State, Pele Latu makes it as an edge rusher, Lee Williams makes it as the other edge rusher, Utah State again. Just uh, Utah really ran this conference, Sean Pratt making it as well, as Phil Givens even makes it as a kicker. That was a bit surprising. Let's go ahead and take a look at award winners, as Curtis Simpson is your Benaric recipient, with James McIntosh finishing second. 
Zach Schuster finishes third for the Bolitnikov, which uh, lined up with his All-American team lining. Um, looking at tight ends here for the Mackey, Davide Flake is top 10. He finishes eighth in the voting for that. For the Remington, Daryl Silva finishes fourth. So hey, he'll be going pro. He had a pretty good year. Curtis Simpson, number one for the Butkus. This is no surprise here. Lee Williams finishes 11th. And then for the Thorpe, surprisingly down at fifth, James McIntosh, a bit of a snub here as he was the first cornerback in the first team, but didn't make it there. And then Derek Canary, no surprise here, finishes number one for the Jet. Maybe the best returning season I've ever seen in the NCAA. Jake Jackson III, who did get injured for the season and was granted a medical redshirt, also had a fantastic, fantastic returning season. Looking at quarterback play over this year, Christian Armstrong was our best quarterback. It wasn't such a shoe-in over Roa Latu. I think it was more of Roa was bad and Christian was not as bad, other than Christian was phenomenal. Although Christian made a lot of good throws that I'm not sure many quarterbacks in the nation could have made. Running game, J.J. Thomas was undisputed the best running back on the team. 12.9 yards of carry, and unfortunately we needed that because Kirk Doherty was getting no help. He still finished with 700 yards, so 1,500 plus combined between the two, but just couldn't make it happen. Zach Schuster, almost 1,200 yards with 21 touchdowns, and Ty Kreese, we almost had our first two 1,000-yard receiver season in Olympia history. Zach, Ty Kreese finishing 950 yards, no other receiver over 200. That says a lot. And then blocking wise, I thought our line was pretty decent this year. Courtney Sullivan and Joseph Banks gave up the most sacks. Eric Ware was also close to second, tied with Bob Haleth. Now going to defense, as I think this was maybe our strongest unit this year. Curtis Simpson, of course, finishing with the most tackles on the team. That is not a surprise to anyone. Um, Jay Moore, though, he had a fantastic season. I thought he was our best safety by far, even though Sam Franklin was decent. And then Curtis Simpson and Vincent Hargrove, Lee Williams, Paleo, all those were a great defensive line. Even were able to generate pressure and get sacks on their own this year. Dick Parrish, Pele Latu. Of course, we did start bringing some blitzes towards the end of the year, but even when we weren't bringing blitzes, these guys were able to get sacks. And then as far as interceptions go, our secondary, James McIntosh with five, but Curtis Simpson with four. He was such a rock in our uh, nickel nickel packages just over the middle. He was a really, really good mic for us this year when Lee Williams wasn't playing mic in our base formation. Um, Eddie Jong had to pick up two fumbles here. This, that's interesting. Um, and just a really, really good season. Touchdowns, Curtis Simpson with two of them on the year, James McIntosh with one, and then Sean Pratt, Jay Moore, and Sam Franklin each had pick sixes as well. So a really good season for the senior, Curtis Simpson. We will be sending him off to the NFL, I am sure of it. Phil Givens, not the best year for him, 78% from the for kicking. And then Courtney Harris was just terrible, we need a new punter. Again, maybe the best returning season I've ever seen from a player, Derek Canary, almost 2,000 yards and 4 touchdowns. Every time he touched the ball, it seemed like something magical could happen. Um, looking at career numbers here, Christian Armstrong is currently sitting at 49 touchdowns to 20 interceptions for his career. That is really solid. He's at 4,000 yards as well. I think he could be a really good quarterback. I, I just don't think he's got the injury history to really be the starter going forward. Leslie Dunmore, however, did get injured for the whole season, so it's hard to say on him. Kirk Doherty finishes his career with 3,000 yards rushing, 5.5 a carry, which is really good, and 29 touchdowns. J.J. Thomas is finish finishes with almost 2,000 yards, 8.3 a carry, and 20 touchdowns. So I think J.J. Thomas just never got the volume he should have. And then Kevin Tate nearing 400 yards for his career. Career receiving for our wide receivers, 2,600 yards for Zach Schuster to 40 touchdowns. Um, Corey Cross finishes his career with 1,100 yards receiving and 13 touchdowns. He really never was able to put that big frame to use. Ty Kreese currently almost sitting at 1,700 yards. And then looking at defense, Curtis Simpson finishes his career with 280 tackles. What? What a career. I mean, that might be one of the best defensive careers I've seen in a long while. I think he was fantastic. 103 tackles for loss to go with 30 sacks, 6 interceptions. He was phenomenal and it's a it's going to be a shame to see him go vincent hargrove also going with a pretty decent career nothing insane but decent very solid um and continuing to look at interceptions here just a lot of players that are already building up really good interception numbers for themselves five force fumbles for curtis to go with two recoveries and two touchdowns in his career all came in, all coming this season 
looking around the NCAA. I've seen Karimi finish with an okay season. He was a little bit turnover prone. Canty Coburn almost picked up a thousand yards. Um, hoping to see him break out. Rayshon Wilman finishes his career with 1,700 yards and 11 touchdowns. Just never could quite be that dominant player. Ted Cook finishes with 100 tackles in his career to go with 77 tackles for loss and 23 and a half sacks. I think he was very solid and he will be going to the pros as a nose tackle. And then looking at interceptions, Darius Carter currently building himself a nice career as well. Michael Smitty, someone to keep an eye on here, 75% from the uh, for field goals. Looking at BYU, Ryan Westergren almost at 3,000 yards, six, point, 6 yards average. He was averaging insane numbers this season before he got injured. Javante Jackson up to 2,200 yards with 21 touchdowns. He projects to be their number one starter. Ronnie Washburn finishes his career with 11,000 yards passing, 110 touchdowns, 234 interceptions. Very, very good quarterback. I think he will fit nicely on some team in the NFL. Tyler Davis, also a very good quarterback, 1,300 yards, 119 touchdowns to 27 interceptions, a bit more consistent throwing. Lillier Tao finishes his career with 50 tackles, 27 tackles for loss, 6 sacks, and 2 interceptions, most of that coming in the tail end of his career. Davide Flacke also getting most of his at the end of his career, 1,300 yards, 17 touchdowns. He was so good as a red zone threat in this season. Looking around the league at other players in their final season, Hank Sherman finishes with 62 tackles, 49 tackles for loss, and 12 sacks. What a good career for Hank Sherman. I think he looks to be in the NFL. Nick Larson, another guy that I've gotten some NFL buzz for. Um, he's going to finish with about 90 tackles, 21 for loss, and 4 sacks. Grant Fogelson, unfortunately I don't think any palpable buzz around him, but he does finish with 80 tackles, 3 tackles for loss, and 1 sack in his career with Virginia. Dre Morris is someone that I want to keep my eye on. He might go pro this year. 3,200 yards on the ground, 6 a carry, and 36 touchdowns. He has been phenomenal. Matt Fitzpatrick, 2,200 yards, 20 touchdowns. He also could go pro. Somebody to keep an eye on here. And then looking at our numbers as opposed to the Big 12, you can see one of the better offensive teams, but not one of the best. And that really is what separated us. Now, we scored the most in the in, uh, Big 12, but just really couldn't get it going on the ground. A lot of the scores came from our defense, actually. Looking at our defensive numbers, really, really solid. I think we stepped up our pass defense big time this year. Rushing defense was really good. Points allowed was okay. A lot of those came from turnovers, though. Most sacks in the Big 12, and then most interceptions tied with UCF in the Big 12. Looking at conversions, yeah, we were okay. Sub 50, about middle of the Big 12. We need to be better on that. 75% on fourth down was really solid, though. I think we did really well on that front. It's just a lot of those came down to fourth down conversions. Tyler Hunt did get an extension offered to him by Olympia's uh, AD this year, and he quickly signed that up. He is a good up-and-coming co coach that we really, really want to put our trust in going forward. I think he's filled the shoes of Eric Cook nicely. He just needs to get us into uh, the playoffs now, or the, uh, I guess not the playoffs, the BCS, as we are no longer, we are not doing the playoffs in this series. Um, we get Rob Sale as our new OC to replace Chris, ba Chris Brad. Um, Rob Sale came from I Illinois where he got fired. Chris Brad goes on to be the head coach at Arkansas State, so his second time being a head coach, we wish him the best in Arkansas State. Maybe we'll see them someday. Now taking a look at players leaving, Zach Schuster considering going to the draft, and this was the most controversial moment in my own mind for this offseason, as you see James McIntosh decided to stay. We will convince Schuster to stay. The reason for that being, the draft class I have already is set. I don't want to add too many more players, and wide receiver is very set. If I add Zach Schuster, he will be one of the top picks, and he will break everything. So we are keeping him for next year's draft. That does mean I'll get him for Olympia. It helps out a lot. As we see Ryan Westergren actually declaring for the draft early. This one, obviously I can't really affect if BYU makes him stay or not. So Michael Smitty also declaring both of these guys will be added to the draft class. Ryan Westergren will shake things up a bit too, as I think he's a very talented prospect. Um, running back was just something I could fudge with a little more than wide receiver, and that is why I decided not to do that. Taking a look at recruiting here, you can see who all we've allocated points to. A lot of players I want, but some of the lower rated players, I'm just trying to put the minimum in to win them. Um, I know this isn't the best strategy, and this could lose us out everybody if I don't put all my points into one. We do get, however, Steven Gonzalez, the punter, Justin Bright, the running back, out of, uh... 
Perryman, and Patrick Quinn, the defensive tackle. So we lose out on Sean Allen and Carter Christopher. That is a bit unfortunate. The uh, Lone Peak players just not coming here. But we have to take what we can get, which is a top 27 recruiting class. So top 30. That puts us number one in the Big 12, which I think is very impressive. Number one in the state of Utah, especially. So you see Carter Christopher goes to BYU. Um, going to hurt to lose him there. Travis Stone, a wide receiver, goes to Utah State. We would never have even had a chance in that one. And both Sean Allen and Carter Christopher, we had a chance for, you can see. Um, but you just can't play around with some of these things. You got to do what you can. 2,000 points we might have could have scrounged up. But at the end of the day, we just had to do what we had to do. The punter maybe is where we made the mistake in putting too many points into. But who knows if somebody needs a punter or not. Taking a look at who goes where now. You can see Sean Allen goes to Utah State as we discussed. Um, Timmy Shelby going to TCU, so he's going to stay in the Big 12. We'll see him. Walter Graham going to Utah. That was a big loss. Joel Fitch going to Oklahoma to play for Coach Cook, um, who did recruit him a bit as a junior and a sophomore. Rome Wallace going to Air Force. Valentino Martinez will go to Miami. Bryant Miller goes to Utah State, so Utah State beefed up their offensive line big time. Um, I'm not looking forward to having to play against those guys, but we will. Eric Cook, of course, son coming here. Um, BYU getting another decent prospect here at running back and then Andrew Sanders decides to go to Minnesota I think he's a steal for them Chad Willis came here of course and then Razzie Scott Royal I'm really excited for him of course he's got to sit behind a few other good safeties already Jonathan Ryan and Tim Jackson both come here could be the next Byron Handy and uh, Brett Kraft we'll see now looking at training results as we got to keep the ball rolling here. Uh, Zach Schuster a bit misleading at plus one. We'll look at him in a second. Um, we'll go position by position as Wesley Dunmore take, takes a huge leap. Now I did use the uh, Dynasty tool for this for the first time ever. So there will be negatives. Roa Latu, I think it's fair to say he lost points. He did not have a good year and he did not look like he was progressing at all. W Wesley Dunmore, however... Looked fantastic, and with all the time he had in his injury, he was able to work on his game, and I think it's fair that he got plus 11. I did not touch any of the numbers on this, by the way. These are all generated by the Dynasty Tools progression mod. You can see Wesley Dunmore is our most accurate quarterback going into next season, and Eddie Jong takes a little bit of a step. Um, gets a lot of awareness, actually, so that's really good for him. Adam Henry got a few points. Darrell Ramsey picks up some points. I think running backs as a whole got a little bit better. Not like a lot better, but decently better. Kevin Tate and Gordon Lawson got a lot better, and I'm excited to run some two fullback sets. That sounds crazy, but if you don't have a good run blocking line, fullbacks are how you can even things up. So Zach Schuster only got plus one because he he got a lot of good traits, but he is so good already that it's hard to improve upon where he's already at. Um, I really think a guy like Brian Davis plus eight, somebody to keep an eye on. And there could be a lot of really good uh, competition at tight or wide receiver this year. Stitch Robinson gets plus five. He needs to be a big part of our game going forward. I think our offensive line got a lot better. Eric Ware is the only one that didn't get any points, and that kind of sucks. But Timmy Van Wert gets plus four. He'll be really solid for us. Bob Haleth gets plus three. He's going to be a very good senior blocker. And Courtney Sullivan also getting a pretty nice uh, boost. Pele Alatu goes up plus three. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Um, right side of our edge line, John Rice, who I'm excited to see, got a lot of points, but nobody else did. Dick Parrish not getting as much of a boost as I personally thought he should have gotten. Um, I, I just feel like the year he had, I thought the tool would give him a little more points, but that is okay. I'm not going to change any numbers myself. We'll stick with what we get. Lee Williams at Mike Linebacker gets a plus three, and Justin Jackson does project as our starter. He gets a big bump up. Excited to see him play. James McIntosh, similar to Zach Schuster, just didn't have points for him to really increase on. Devin McKinney goes up while Mark Walker and Sean Pratt don't, and that's a little disappointing on those guys. And then Jay Moore, plus five. Sam Franklin, only up plus one. Matt Owens, maybe, should get some time. Holy Kaleole, only up plus one as well. Then at kicker, Phil Givens, no points. So a bit of a shame there. Let's take a look around the league now as... Christian Armstrong has transferred to Baylor, staying in conference. Oh boy, there just wasn't any uh, room. We had like six quarterbacks on the roster, and I felt like Christian Armstrong, with the talent he's got, would transfer to a decent school. Roa Latu transfers to Utah State because he actually has a chance to start for them and will start for them. So we will see Roa Latu. Thank goodness we don't have to have him on our team. I'm so sorry. I liked him, but he just never really worked out for us. Wesley Dunmore currently projecting as our starter. Of course, Eric Cook will get a chance. Um, 
I think Bill Chambers will get a chance. It's going to be interesting to see. Chris Mason could push uh, Wesley Dunmore or at least run some packages. I can't wait to see it. Utah, we will get at home this year, but then it is a three-game away trip. Nebraska, Boise State, and Nevada all have recruits I'm excited to watch. Of course, Nebraska's got Dre Morris and Matt Fitzpatrick in their final year. And then we go to Big 12 play and end the year on the road in Provo. I'm really excited for the schedule. I think this gives us a good chance to see a lot of the prospects we've watched grow up in this league. Um, I know this is another time we're seeing Nevada. Utah is no surprise at this point. Or, uh, sorry, another time we're seeing Nebraska. Nevada's a new one that we haven't seen since the Mountain West days. I'm excited to watch them. I think this is going to be a fun one. It's a winnable schedule as well, but still tough, especially on the road. So I think if we can win out our out of conference, we might be looking at some BCS aspirations. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next season. Have a good one.